All right, so we're going to be talking through a um, marble slide from Desmos instead of an IXL today. So uh, the kind of background for this is we're trying to put what we learned about the A, B, C, and D values. So we're thinking about like amplitude, the period of the graphs, like where the, re where the wave repeats. Um, the phase shift, so we didn't see that very much in the IXLs, but that's moving the graph left and right based off this. And that's the C value, and then the D value would be a vertical shift, so if there was something tacked on to the end. Uh, we're going to go through just a little bit of what each piece of information does to the picture. Um, but for the most part, we're going to leave this up to you to uh, kind of practice, just play around with, and see what it does. So we've done these before, but just as a reminder, the, the goal is when we hit launch here, these uh, marbles are going to drop and they're going to follow our path that we have made by our graph. And in this case, they are uh, waves, and I think most of them are, most if not all, are sine waves for this one. So when I hit launch, you notice it collects all the stars on its way down. That's what we're looking for. Um, if I go to the second one here, fix it number one is what it's called. It says change one number in the row below to fix the marble slide. Um, now I definitely want to preface this by saying make sure that you read the little blurbs that are off to the side here, the little quotes like the instructions, because um, sometimes it can get um, to a point where you feel like you're in the groove and you can just jump straight to this and start playing around with numbers. If it tells you to just to change one number, I'm not going to mark it wrong or anything like that if you do more than one, but you're making it a little harder on yourself than it needs to be. That tells you that it's possible to do this by just changing one of these numbers. And remember, um, if you mess up and you just want to start over or something like that, you can hit this gear icon and then hit reset and it takes it back to the normal or what it started as. Um, let's kind of run through all the changes here real quick. Um, let's pull up this and let's talk about this two that they have here. Remember that's your A value. What that does is it affects the amplitude and what the amplitude is is it's the distance from the middle of the graph. So if I put a line that goes through the middle of the graph where half of it's above and half of the wave is below, it's the distance from that midline to the top. So in this case, that looks like it's one, two blocks. Well, that makes sense. That's a two right here. So if you uh, change that to to let's say like a 12, you'll notice it would go off the screen. It's actually going up to 12 up there. I guess you can't even scroll up. So that shows you kind of your limitations there. Um, the one half, that's the B value. Remember that affects the period. What the period is is how far it gets stretched, uh, the wave gets stretched left and right. Uh, remember the formula for that is if you're in degrees, it would be 360. In this case, we're in radians. I can tell because I see pi here. It would be, oops, let me go down a size there. It'd be like 2 pi. Remember, that's 360 if we're in degrees, but we're not in this case. Over B, which is the 1 half in this case, equals its period length. Remember, period length is however far from the start of the graph at zero, so like notice it's right here. It's however far we have to travel this way to the right before it resets where we would be repeating ourselves, going up, down. Okay, we'd be repeating up, down. It's also the distance. Some find it easier. This doesn't click as fast for me, but it's, it would also be this peak to peak distance or like valley to valley, I guess you would say distance right there would be the same thing. And then you can compare that to the uh, the x-axis. 
So changing that from like a, oops, from a one half to let's say like a one fourth, you notice it gets stretched a little bit more there. Okay, for the phase shift, um, that's this. What that does is it moves it left and right. So if you notice if I call that like a two pi, the whole thing scoots over. Three pi, it gets scoot, scooted over even more. Uh, be careful, it's a little bit opposite of what you might typically think. A minus here pushes the whole thing to the right and a plus would push it to the left. And if you wanted to get really specific with it, you'd basically take this and set it equal to zero, meaning like x minus pi equals zero. If you solved that for x by adding pi to both sides, well, zero plus pi is pi. That's how far it gets scooted over. So that's why it's kind of like the opposite. So it's moving uh, that direction to the right pi units. And looks like if this is two pi, one pi would be about from here to here. Okay, and then finally, uh, we don't have it given to us here, but if I was to put a plus or a minus at the end, so like a plus four, uh, what that does is it takes the middle of the graph and it shifts it up plus or minus whatever you put there. If you notice the middle of the graph now, the midline is now at four. It's not where it crosses um, the y-axis, but it's the middle of the graph. So if I get rid of that, it's at zero. If I add that plus four, it's at four. So that's what that change does. Um, so if I reset here, I'll basically say it's your job to figure out what change is necessary to when I hit launch that it collects all of them. So if you notice, it misses two of them right now. Okay, um, I think that's about all that we'll need to talk about and let you guys play around with the rest of it. Okay, uh, that's the reset button. Change one number change two numbers for this one. Notice what this does. This in brackets here, x greater than one. What that does is if we think about, if this is zero and that's two pi, that mean this would be like pi, which is like 3.14. One would be about right here. What it's doing is it's only showing the graph where the x values are greater or bigger than 1. So that's why it's only showing the right side. If I change that and I put like less than 1, now it's only showing the left side. If I change this 1 to 2 pi, and to get the pi, by the way, you type the letters pi. Um, now, see, it's at 2 pi. That's where it shows you to the right or if I change this to the left. Let's reset. So that's another tool you can use to help kind of cut your graph at a certain spot. Uh, let's continue. Change one. Uh, okay, so you get a few of these prediction problems. There's no real right or wrong, but I do ask that you Give it your best educated guess here. If I change the 2 to a 5, what would happen? Heck, if you're really um, unsure of what would change here, you could type this in. Like, you could just start a new line right here and type in y equals and type that in and see what it would do. That would let you kind of play around and see that specific change. Verify, okay, so it's asking us to actually make that change. I won't spoil anything here. Another prediction, same thing. If we changed one number to another number, what would happen? Again, verifying predictions. And then it looks like at slide 15 going into 16, they change into challenge slides. Um, I won't assign those. If you do them, awesome. I think it's going to show your understanding and show that you have this stuff mastered. Um, but I won't make that something that everybody needs to get to. Okay, if we have questions, um, feel free to let me know. Feel free to 
work and watch back through this simultaneously and pause, rewind, slow down, whatever you need to do. All right, thanks.